Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we are going to be taking you through my five top tips for starting a brand new settlement in Farthest Frontier. Now, I've been playing this game for a while now, and I have been absolutely loving it. So if you guys want a series on this game, do let me know down in the comments below. And if you enjoy this video, smash that like button and the subscribe. But without further ado, guys, let's get into number one. Obviously, this isn't a tip, guys, but when you are choosing your map, you can choose whatever you like, whether you want to go Pioneer for Easy, Trailblazer for Medium, Vanquisher, and including in that, click on these advanced settings, and you can really set the settings to whatever you want. For the purpose of this video, we're just going to stick it on Plains, probably, and Middle One, just to show you what to do in the video. So, without further ado, let's get into our first tip. So let's talk about our first tips for placing your town center. Now, when you come onto this map, make sure you place your town center relatively quickly. We are on large here. You can see the fertility bonus and the water bonus up in the top corner. We've also got all our resources around here. So these are gatherable resources, a lot of these. We've also got some boar over here. This area is thick forest, which will be great for later. We've also got a lake over there as well. So you want to just have a little bit of a scout around. Try and find the best areas for resources. We've got clay over this way as well, which is a good resource for later in the game. Always good to be near some water sources for water and, of course, for fishing as well. Because that's a really reliable way to get food throughout the game. But it looks like this map doesn't actually have that many resources in terms of... We've got a deep uh, stone there. Um... So yeah, not too many resources in general in terms of the other minerals. But we do have a lot of resources in terms of gatherable resources. Clay over there as well. So I'm thinking in terms of where we're going to place this, I'm thinking somewhere in the resource range. So you want to be near a lot of resources. But on top of that, you want to have a look for your fertility. This is really, really, really important. So, if we want some good fertility, it looks like we're not going to be able to go near any of the lakes. So, instead of that, what I'm thinking is that we place it somewhere in this vicinity. Because this is the best fertility that we've got in the region. Um, yeah, really good fertility over here compared to anywhere else. So, I think that's probably the best area to go for. We've also got, if we look north, we've got a lot of resources available to us. Uh, but we want to be near the fertility. Don't place your town center on top of the fertility. You also want to be somewhere that's relatively flat. And we can see that it is relatively flat over here. And definitely when you place it, don't place it on top of a load of stones and trees. For example, if I placed it over here, because it would take them forever, forever, genuinely forever, guys. To get everything cleared up. And by that time, they're all going to be hungry. They're all going to be angry. They're all going to be upset. So what you really want to do is place it in an area. So I'm thinking that doesn't have much of that stuff. So I'm thinking right here. We're near the fertility. Um, and we're also near a lot of our food resources. I know we're quite far away from a lake. So we're not going to be have a load of reliable food income very early on. But... We are near a lot of fertility. Alternatively, another good place probably would be around this way, uh, where you've got a bit of fertility. But the fertility over here is just so much better, and that's going to be much more important going through the game. So, let's stick our town center in there, and then we can get on to our next tip. So, when you get to this point, guys, it's really, really important to plan out your city. Don't just start building. What you want to do is get your roads in there. And what I tend to do is a standard grid formation, but it's completely up to you how you want to do it. Uh, but yeah, get the grids in there so you know where you're going to be building. And what you want to do is you want to plan various areas. We don't want to build everything in the same place because we have something called desirability. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But for now, we're going to build all these roads coming out make sure they are at right angles and not wonky because you can do that quite easily in this game make some wonky roads so yeah i think that is right isn't it is it that no it's definitely not that it's definitely not that so yeah get your roads in there 
build them all around this nice grid formation. Going to do you really well going through the game. So let's go all the way up north. And same thing over here. All the way up north. All these uh, buttons have shortcut skies as well. So do remember that. You don't need to keep pr clicking on all of the buttons. But you can use the shortcuts instead. Now when we've got our grid formation guys. What you're going to do is you're going to set out some areas. So if you go back to our fertility. What I'm thinking is this area. What I tend to do is have three different areas. We'll have a housing area. We'll have a farming area. And we will have an industry area. So although we've got a lot of resources around here, don't worry about building over these uh, in the, the long run. Because you've got loads of other resources around, as we can see. So we can just keep expanding outwards towards more resources. So looking at the map, what I'm thinking, fertility-wise, we're going to set up our farms probably around this region here. Next, what I'm thinking is potentially the industry area. If we look at what resources we have available to us... I'm thinking the industry area should potentially be up here in the north because we've got a clay deposit which we're eventually going to build over and that's going to really reduce desirability. So on top of that, what we're going to do then is have a look at this area being our housing area. Now when we do our housing area, guys, really, really, really important that you allow room for desirability buildings. So what I tend to do is if we plan this out, or oh, we can't quite yet. But these are three by three, these buildings. So we go one, two, three. That's one building. One, two, three. And then we can go across. And we go one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's two houses. That's four houses in there. So we want to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we will build this road here. So we should get a lot of houses in there. We should get uh, so yeah, we should get eight houses in there. So what I tend to do is to build, say, eight houses, build another eight houses coming this way, maybe this way, and have a square in the middle for desirability, because I'll show you what's going on if we don't do that, and we'll cut to that now. So here we are, guys, at one of my earliest cities that I ever started to build, that I actually abandoned because of this desirability issue. Now, if we go on to desirability here, so that's fertility, we can see that we do have some decent desirability in here. But in order to get these housesteads, uh, sorry, homesteads up to the next level, we need 65 desirability. Now, if I want to do that, what I'm going to have to do is build desirability buildings. This is for a little later on for you guys. So it's just an extra few tips, which could be the festival pole, that sort of thing. But if we look, I've built up against the sea here. I've got my industrial area over here, which is reducing desirability. I've built up against the lake. So there's no space at all to fit any more desirability buildings. Which I could fit one in there, but it's again up against that. So it's going to be fighting against that. So what you want to be able to do is on this side, you can see, we've built out, we've spread out a bit more. So we've got spaces for desirability buildings. Now, the reason why this is really important is you want all your initial houses to level up. And when they get to these requirements, they will level up automatically, guys. Automatically. You don't need to do anything about it. And when they get to the second level, it is the most important level because then they start giving you taxes, which gets you gold, which allows you to trade and all that jazz and have a few more extra important buildings such as the school um, i don't think the school actually takes money per month but it costs money to build the healer's house takes money per month so all those important buildings take gold so that's why you want to build a desirability square in your housing areas and i'll just show you what it could look like for you so here we are at another city and let's just ignore the serious issues we might be having right now. <laughs> Another early game city. But you can see the idea here, guys. The desirability section in the middle over here. We've got various things. We've got the school. We've got the market. We've got the festival pole. And we've got the large park. All in this little area to boost the desirability. And we're going to build our houses around 
that area so that our desirability stays equal across all these sort of houses. And that's the way that you want to do it. But obviously, <laughs> we don't have a lot of food in this city right now, which is a big problem. But just ignore that and take this idea for you guys going forward. So let's get back to our startup city and let's talk about tip number three. So on to tip three, guys, and that is food production. Prioritize food production. You can see that already they have some resources set to harvest these trees and rocks. So don't worry too much about harvesting this whole region for resources right now. But let's prioritize our food production. Once this is done, we'll get back to you with a few different tips and tricks for that. So now that the town center is done, we can stick all our housing in there. Don't worry too much about the direction it says that they're facing. And we did actually uh, fit them in very nicely there. That's good. We're going to build a few more houses than we actually need, just in case we get immigrants straight away. So we're overbuilding houses a little bit, but that's fine. Houses are one of those things that if you overbuild them, that's absolutely no problem whatsoever. Now, in terms of our food production, this is what you're going to have to prioritize very early on, very quickly, because food production is the most important thing at all. But you don't have a lot um, to your name early on. So I think fishing shack over here, you really do want to try and build this in a place where there is a fish shoal that we've seen before. The fish shoal icon that we saw when we were placing down our main town center. But unfortunately, there is none available for us here. So what we are going to do, try and place it somewhere where it's not going to take them a lot to build it. So somewhere like here. Although look at that, fishing area is only six it's not really that good, is it? Whereas we've got seven here. But do remember, you can change the area in which they're going to fish. So don't worry too much because you can change it to be further out and have a few more fishing areas. So we're going to build a fishing area in there as well. Now, probably more importantly, we are going to build a forager uh, shack. Now, when you're building forager shacks and hunting cabins, guys, uh, hunting cabin over here, do remember that they only take one worker, so you might have to build more than one early game to get these guys uh, enough food. But don't worry about that, because they only take one worker. Now, we're going to build our hunting shack. We're going to build it over here. This is going to be farming, but I'm happy to build it kind of in the middle over here, because it's near. Boars over this way, deer there. And also, I think, boars and deer over that way. So, we're just going to start with one of each for now. We're also going to build a gatherer's uh, forager shack over here. Gatherer's hut. That's, uh, that's from <laughs> uh, Banished, isn't it? I believe. But once those are all built, we'll come back in a second, guys. Just one little bonus tip, guys. Remember, if you click on a building that you want prioritized, just click on it and tick the prioritize button, and it'll come up with this green exclamation mark. Because I'm not too bothered about the housing right now. I want these guys to build the food huts. The housing will come along as we go along. So you can prioritize that way if you really want something built a little quicker. Also, remember to build your wells, guys. Build them in some place that has decent water. Over here, it's not amazing, but it's not terrible either. And you want them to be near your houses because, of course, the houses need water all the time. So being close to where they're going to be used, always remember to do that. Always remember, remember to pair buildings together. So now our forager shack and our hunting hut are built. We can now change the work area in here. This is where you can retarget it. Now, when you're looking for forager shack, we can see we've got a lot, a lot of berries over here. These berries, the bird's nests, the nuts, the greens, and uh, of course, all of these things on here, willow, uh, roots, mushrooms, they all come into season at slightly different times. So ideally, you want something like this, a big mix of different uh, different resources. But for now, because we've got such a good spread of resources in this area, we are going to stick it here because there's so many berries. That's really going to help us out going through the game. The hunting hut as well. Make sure you do place it in some place where you're going to be able to get the different uh, resources which are shown. So we've got boar and we've got deer in this area. So that's going to be a fantastic place for us to move that to. So that's really good. Now, 
Once that is all built, guys, let's keep on talking about food before we get onto firewood and all that sort of thing. Food production, you want to get your farm set up as early as possible. Once you've got your proper... Uh, once you've got your proper food production ready and going, let's set up your farms. Now, we're only, go, only going to start with two small farms, but you can do it however you like. You can have one bigger one. You can have two smaller ones. You can have four small ones, but just remember you've only got 12 people, so you don't want to be building too many early on. What I'm going to do is set them up so they're ready, and one of them is going to be on, whereas the other one is going to uh, be off until we get a few more people in the city but we'll wait until that's done and i'll build a couple of other things along the way and we shall see how we get on so here we are guys and one thing to note it's taken me so so long to get to this point because honestly early game your big big issues are labor and wood and honestly sometimes the the ai is a bit dumb with how it prioritizes stuff. You can see we need all this wood, yet all of them have just been taking rocks rather than actually harvesting this wood resources that, you know, are more important to us right now. And there's no way, I believe, at this point in time to prioritize the wood over the rocks. I mean, I could remove that as a target, but I don't want to because that would delete the road. Um, so, yeah. Uh, just bear that in mind. Labor and wood early on are your two biggest limiting factors. And on top of that, you do get options to get um, to get immigrants um, by fulfilling certain tasks. So this particular task is to get four months supply of food, which we have, and six houses. So the quicker we can get six houses, we can get more people, we'll have more labor, and we'll be able to then get a bit more wood, a bit more stone, and then we can just snowball from there. But that early grind is going to be slow, guys, so do bear that in mind. But let's talk about food production one more time. So let's talk about crop fields. Now, you can press this button up here to explain to you how to do it. But let's just talk about what we want to do. So we want to add crops. You can see the weed level in here. You can see the rockiness in here, environmental fertility. We've got fertility of 74%. Now, that's a decent-ish fertility to start with. But when we are creating our crop rotations, if we have a look at these, you can see that there's many, many different factors. They've got a crop yield, frost tolerance, heat tolerance, rockiness resistance, weed suppression, grow time, impact on fertility, and fertility dependence. Now, the main important thing here, guys is the fertility so the impact on fertility and if we look at wheat you can see minus six percent fertility um, same thing for rye and that sort of thing really bad on fertility so what we can do to try and combat that is we have clovers over here that gives more fertility we've also got farmers to perform field maintenance and what this does is it reduces the weed level and the rockiness which then gives a boost to the amount of yield you get as well what I tend to like to do is to either stick one of these in every single year and have this and uh, and maybe like turnips or something like that in there. You've also got this soil mixture in here, but that's something for later on when you've got clay and you've got sand and that can allow you to uh, change the, uh, the mix so that you get up to here, for example, and get a boost. To your, uh, to your fertility per different crop, remember? So don't be too bothered about that to start with. But I can either do that, or if we just remove these, I also quite like to do a year where you get two of those and maybe nothing else. No, not two of those because that happens. So one of those in every year, and it boosts fertility really, really well. I know it sounds a bit ridiculous, but it only 3%. And then what I'd like to tend to do is to intersperse one of these in there so that they can maintain the land. And then we'll probably have one, say, leeks, which is minus 5% fertility there. So we've got to be careful with that. But it's a long growing time and has a high yield. And then we can have a look at what else we want to do. I kind of like to either have peas or beans because they actually get a good yield but also increase fertility. Whereas some of the other, uh, other ones don't do the same. We can actually fit peas 
and turnips in there. So we're, our guys are going to be eating a lot of turnips. Now, if you want to, you can kind of add another one of these in there as well to do some extra maintenance. But for now, I think that's going to be fine. Um, but yeah, getting these in so that your fertility goes uh, goes up. If it doesn't go up, if it doesn't stay stable, your fertility is going to tank and then you'll be yielding about one um, one cabbage per, se per, uh, per season. So yeah, don't do that. Allow yourself to have fertility. These don't give you food or anything. They're literally just pointless. They're just there for fertility. But it's going to pay dividends in the long run. So don't worry too much about having something that doesn't yield more food. Because it's going to make you yield more food in the long run. But I'll, I will see you in a second, guys. So we have fulfilled the requirements to get the immigrants, which is great. Seven people have arrived at the village. Now that leads us on to tip four. Do not overbuild early game guys do not overbuild and that's what i've potentially done a little bit at the start with all these houses it's taken them a while to build them all as we can see now you can change your professions in here i like to keep it on auto fill auto refill and that'll re actually refill everyone in there that means that there's only two on there it means it's put two on to here so we'll enable construction now for that farm um, but yeah, it pretty much will auto-fill all the garrisons. If you want to change it specifically, you can change that. You can also change the number of builders. I like to keep it on four. But one key thing to note, guys, if you start overbuilding, if I start going into here and I start building a load of extra things, a load of different things in here, like 10 farms, that sort of thing, so a smoke, well, more smokehouse will do that in a bit anyway. But loads of resources, more defenses, everything. If you overbuild and you get zero laborers, your city will stop functioning. You need laborers. Early game especially, you need a lot of laborers to be clearing away trees because you've got no reliable source of wood. And you can see, we're still on zero, even though I've got them all clearing all of these trees in this region. They're pretty much using them straight away for firewood, uh, for everything else. So do not overbuild early on. Always, especially early game, keep four or five laborers around. I know we've got nine, so we will expand a little bit. And each time you get over that number, then you can add another building. You can add another thing to build, which is quite cool. Um, but yeah, when you get later on, you're looking at between 10 to 20% of the workforce as laborers to keep everything running smoothly, everything ticking over. And link to that, guys, when you're building buildings, <laughs> when you're building buildings, make sure you put the building that is going to store, that is going to provide the consumables to that building nearby. For example, we have the firewood splitter over here who makes firewood, but it's right next to the stockyard because they're going to put any extra wood into the stockyard. And the firewood's also going to go into the stockyard as well. So basically, it just reduces the travel time for the laborers. All they have to do is go there to there, there to there, there to there, there to there, there to there. Rather than if we had the stockyard over here, it'd be a longer route and it would take longer. So try and keep efficient with all that stuff. Now, let's move on to the final tip, guys. The final tip when you're starting your city. And although I said not to overbuild... What you want to do is you want to rush for tier 2. And tier 2 needs 8 shelters, which we're nearly got. It needs a market, it needs 30 population, 60 wood planks, and 30 stone. And then you can click this upgrade button. Now, to get wood planks, what you need to build is the saw pit over here. Do remember that that chews through logs very quickly. That's why I've not built it yet, because we're already using logs in our saw pit. We've already got a log deficit. We've not even built everywhere yet. So do remember that, that you want that. And you also want a storehouse over here as well, so that you can build the market. And the market is going to go near all your houses, and it's going to provide you gold. So it's a great way of providing gold. It needs to be near the house to stock the house with food and wood, uh, and, all the, and firewood and all that sort of thing. So do put it near the houses. You'll see the radius effect when you put it there. But when you get to tier 2, look how many buildings we can get extra on tier 2. Loads of buildings, loads of extra food options, and all of the resource, pretty much nearly all of the resource buildings, guys. Nearly all of them. 
So, make sure that you are getting to tier 2 as quickly as humanly possible. Because once you're there, you have so many more options to make food, to, make, uh, to get resources, to then make luxuries, to trade with uh, outside merchants, to get more gold, or to uh, get farming equipment such as cows, that sort of thing. So tier 2 is incredibly important to get. So you want to go for that as quickly as you can. But I think that is it for this tips and tricks video, guys. If you did enjoy, let me know down in the comments below. Stick us a like, stick that subscribe button, and let me know if you want to see an actual series on this game. I would love to do that because I really do enjoy this game indeed. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you all again on the next video.